Have you ever had an employee take a bit too much sick leave? Maybe it was a weekend bender that spilled into the Monday and they're taking advantage of their leave. Or maybe they lied about where they were and you find out that they weren't actually sick. In this controversial episode, I'm going to be tackling misuse of sick leave, excessive sick leave, and even those situations where an employee might be lying or taking advantage of the situation. And trust me, it is a controversial one. Hi everyone, welcome back to Lawlands. My name is Sanam and thank you so much for tuning in today. You may be listening to this episode going, Sanam, are you trying something new, something a bit sultry with the voice? I promise you I am absolutely not. I have been sick over the last week with the flu and I thought what a better way than to use this voice to do a sick leave related episode. So it sparked my curiosity because about a month ago I did do a post around sick leave and what measures employers can take in terms of stopping an employee from taking advantage of sick leave. And boy, oh boy, did the LinkedIn community come after me. (laughs) They absolutely were not happy with what I suggested. And I thought, what a better way than to tackle this in an actual episode where I can spill the tea and also make sure that we cover off all of the tips and tricks and insights that I've gained over the last decade of dealing with small employers, medium-sized employers, and the difficult that they face in the industry when it comes to people taking advantage of sick leave. Because unfortunately, if you run a business and you employ people, then there are lots of things that you will encounter. And one of them is that employees become sick and some of them even misuse their sick leave or some of them start taking excessive sick leave or taking advantage of sick leave. And I know that this is very controversial and I know this is where a lot of people are going to get their eyebrows and backs up and go, hey, Sanam, what are you talking about. But like I said, I did a post on this and it sparked lots of debate because the reality is that sometimes an employee chucks a sickie. But this is dedicated and really for my smaller and medium-sized employers that are really struggling with this. And I'm not talking about a company with 2,000 employees. I'm talking about those mom and dad businesses that have maybe three or four employees at a time. And if a few people are chucking sickies or a few people get sick, then what happens? there because the entire business can stop its operations and its tracks. So I thought, why not have a discussion? Now, my only caveat and warning for this one is that this episode is not for, and I'm just going to reiterate, this is not for ongoing long-term sickness, medical incapacity, or anything like that. I will be dedicating an entire series to that with guides and with information and online courses and learnings that is definitely due to come. If you are interested, then please please sign up in the description down below. This episode is for the people that are dealing with maybe young employees that just so happen to chuck the sickie on the Monday or the Friday. Or maybe you're dealing with intermittent and frequent sick leave for various reasons. Sometimes they might have diarrhea. Sometimes they might have a fever. Sometimes they might have a headache. So it's all over the place and you can never pinpoint one particular underlying medical condition. And I want to make sure that you have checked off that box. So again, this episode is not for ongoing sickness and injury, and it's not about genuine sickness. This is more about what happens when you've got a workforce that's sporadically taking sick leave, it's intermittent or maybe frequent, and you're just thinking, what can I do? How do I put a stop to this? But before we get into it, it's been a while and this voice is croaky, I know, but it's Laughs with Lawlands where I give you a dry joke in these episodes. Have you heard the rumor about butter? Never mind, I shouldn't be spreading it. It's good. I told you they're always dry. But speaking of butter, I want to make these sick leave situations as smooth as butter for you. Stick around because we're going to get into all of the nitty gritty. And if you are tuning in for the first time, then hello. I'm so glad that you decided to stop by. And if you have been here for a while and you are liking these episodes, or maybe you just like today's one, then definitely follow the podcast and jump over onto LinkedIn so you'll never miss the key employment law insights that I send your way. All right. Well, 
Well, taking advantage of sick leave. It's an interesting one and this can be for many reasons. I had somebody ask me this a couple of months ago actually and that's what kind of sparked the post that I did on LinkedIn, which again, like I said, super controversial. It made its way around the LinkedIn community. Definitely got a lot of flack for that. But it was a very interesting one because I came at it from a small business perspective and the person that asked me the question was a small business and a small employer. And they said, what happens? Because I've noticed that employees, maybe they're meant to be working on the Sunday, they're rostered on a Sunday. Keep in mind, everyone, there's a lot of different scenarios. And in this case, they had employees that would come in on a Sunday. And if these employees came in on a Sunday, then a lot of times they would call in sick because they were out with their friends and they were generally the younger employees that would call in sick. And so for a small employer, it can be very, very serious to have a few employees that are out. It's hard to roster people on last minute. You might be short of staff. So what do you do? It can make or break your business and your staffing and your team when you're trying to operate as a smaller or medium sized employer. And this is where maybe the employees have gone out on a bender on the weekend. Maybe they're taking advantage of sick leave, knowing that they can't tap into their annual leave last minute, but it's easier to just call in sick. And I know some people say we don't want employees to be bleary eyed and feeling awful coming into work, but it's about setting the expectations around what is expected by the employer and what the employee should be doing. So bear with me because I want to get into all of the tips around how you can navigate when employees are taking advantage of sick leave. And like I said, this isn't with underlying medical conditions or anything like that. This is intermittent, maybe frequent. You're looking at different reasons for the sick leave, very strategically placed, maybe on a Monday or a Friday. And you're kind of looking at the leave pattern there and going, hmm, this looks a little bit suspicious here. So you can use a combination of these, but these are my top tips. And I would really highly suggest that you take some time to think about what works best Best for you and your business. It is very easy, I've noticed, for people to spout on the internet and say, you should do it this way, this is the best way, but only you know what works best for your business and you need to take what you can do within the parameters of the law and fit that commercially for your business. So these are the tips that I have. One, would be to have an informal chat with the employee. Now, this will allow you to see if the employee has actually any specific reasons why they might not be coming into work. And this is what I would suggest to do very early on so that you can cover all your bases and make sure that there's nothing underlying there. Now, with that, let's say you've done all of that and now you're at the stage where you're thinking, what do I do? I've seen some people suggest to present the leave pattern to the employee, but... I say use with caution because you need to make sure that the employee is going to be receptive to this. If you have an unresponsive employee, an employee that is quite combative, then sometimes presenting a leave pattern issue will not be the best situation or the best scenario for your business. So that's why I say use with caution, see if that fits in with the parameters. But a lot of times presenting that pattern, having a chat with the employee and saying, look, out of the last month, you have taken five days worth of sick leave and that will really lay that out for that particular employee. That will bring awareness to the situation and you as an employer have an issue and your good faith obligation allows you to raise those concerns in a timely manner. So you shouldn't have to shy away from that. That is one area where you can have a look at trying to address the situation. The other one would be implementing a policy. This is really strong and I believe a lot of employers discredit it or they might not think that this is the the way to go because it requires a bit of extra work in the beginning. But I can tell you a policy will be a great asset and a great tool for an employer because what it does is it lays out very clearly the requirements that the employee needs to meet in order for them to call in sick, for example, for who to contact, for what's required. Maybe you want to have a medical certificate be brought in. And also the policy can include something that is not very common, but a return to work interview is something that a lot of employers do. I know that it's quite common overseas in jurisdictions like the UK or in Australia, but in New Zealand, it isn't something that was done too often. I've had employers in the past do it, and I believe that it can be really beneficial because what ends up happening is you sit down with the employee. Firstly, you find out if they're fit and able to be at work and if they're actually feeling okay to be there, but also it creates that extra layer of, look, this is an extra effort that's required 
decide if you are chucking a sickie or if you are lying about not being at work. Now, in terms of the medical certificate side, I'm going to get into all of that because that is one area that is extremely controversial. But keep in mind that a well-detailed policy that sets expectations, that tells the employee who they need to contact, that they need to contact them as soon as possible. And even if you want to build in a return to work interview, then those are all possibilities that you can have in place. And as long as the employee has signed and accepted this policy, then you know that if they are chucking a sickie, you can rely on that for disciplinary reasons if there is anything where they haven't met the requirements of the policy. But we'll get into what a disciplinary will look like because it can get complicated. Trust me, we'll talk about some of those cases. Now, with the medical certificates, what I wanted to get into is that this is one controversial area when it comes to sick leave and the landscape that we're in now. A lot of people approach sick leave from the perspective of there's mental health concerns and all of these things. And you're absolutely right. There is, those people are correct, but what we're talking about is a different situation here. Yes, there are employees that may have mental health concerns, but this is not the episode for that. We will talk about that in another episode. For this one, when we're looking at medical certificates, we're talking about maybe suggesting to the employee that they should bring in a medical certificate for even one day of absence. Now, one day of absence, a lot of people don't suggest, and it's because the employer will need to pay for the medical certificate. And if the employer needs to pay for the medical certificate, a lot of times the employer is like, I'll just let it go. I don't want to keep forking out money for this. But sometimes when you're dealing with this day in and day out and the employee is being constantly difficult and they're chucking these sickies a lot of times they don't want to go wait in the doctor's office they don't want to take time out of their day to go and sit in a doctor's office to get that medical certificate because they're effectively chucking that sickie so this is something that I suggest as a commercial option it's well within the confines of the law so why wouldn't I suggest it now again if it's less than three days then the employer has to pay for that medical certificate if it's three or more consecutive calendar days doesn't have to be working days It just has to be calendar days that the employee is off and they've said that they were sick for those three consecutive days. Then the employee pays for that medical certificate. And if you have it built out in your policies, clearly laid out, and it's a precedent that you've set that these employees need to bring this in, then why not? I suggest this as an option many times because, like I said, employees don't want to be waiting in the doctor's office. But keep in mind that one thing that's required by employers is that you cannot let this linger or loom. You need to notify the employee as soon as possible that they need to bring in that medical certificate. And it's really critical that they bring it in and that they have shown that they were unfit for work during that time. That's what I would suggest in terms of my top tips for people taking advantage of sick leave. And I know people have said to me, sick leave is sick leave. If you're sick, you're sick. But the reality is as an employer, you need options to navigate the workplace. The next area I wanted to have a look at, this was misuse of sick leave. And this is very very, very, very different. Misuse of sick leave is where an employee may be lying or they may be saying that they are actually sick, but then you find out that they're not. But this comes with a lot of interesting layers to it. It's not as simple and clear cut as you think it's going to be. Depending on the severity of the case, you can go down a disciplinary process or you can even terminate the employee. But I would really suggest that you use this with caution and you really hear me out before going down this path because evidence is so critical here and it is really important and I want to reiterate this so much because I was completely mind blown when I saw this in a 2013 case when it came out. But the courts, the employment courts were very clear that it is not the employer's job to dictate how an employee is meant to spend their sick leave day. Yes, you've heard that right. It is not your job to say that the employee shouldn't be out playing golf, shouldn't be doing this X, Y, or Z. It is not the employer's job to do that. They need to let the employee take their sick leave and use it as they want. However, there is a fine line between misusing and being able to maybe go and play golf. And you're saying to me, Sanon, what's the obsession with golf? 
golf. <laughs> I'll get into it because there's actually a case that relates to it. So let's kick this off by looking at that 2013 case. Very, very popular case. A lot of the lawyers know about it. They love to reference it. It's a 2013 case where an employee was successfully dismissed because they took non-genuine sick leave. And the employee actually originally applied for five days off to attend a rowing competition. That's right. They wanted to go rowing and they wanted to compete and they had exhausted all of their leave options and even it gone into leave in advance and the employer reluctantly said okay look I'll give you three days how about that do you want to take that but the employee never confirmed they never came back in any capacity and then they came into work on the day that they wanted to start their leave basically and when they came in they said oh you know my calf muscle it really hurts and they ended up going home because they weren't feeling well on Facebook the employer finds out that the employee actually attended the competition and then the employer gets a letter from the event representative which details that the employee would be at the event and it was all evidence that was backing this up right you've got Facebook photos you've got event representatives and what's important about this case and what made it set itself apart from all the other cases that have been about misuse of sick leave or non-genuine sick leave is that the employer followed a fair and reasonable and proper process to gather all of the evidence. They did not have any holes in their particular case and that is important. Your investigation, your fact finding needs to be very ironclad. You cannot have any holes there and it was clear that the employee tried to mislead, deceive and they refused to cooperate with the employer throughout that process because it was to the point where the trust and confidence that was expected in this relationship had been lost and diminished with the employee being a bit cagey, not really cooperating. And you can see here that the threshold is really high, right? It is about looking and seeing what evidence you have because one of the things that the employment court said is that you can't just peel that back unnecessarily to look behind the medical certificate certificate. You need to make sure that you are actually considering if there are any holes in this case, which may be contradictory to what the employee was doing. Now, I would say in this case, there are key indicators here of why this was falling into a more successful case for an employer. One, the employee decided to take annual leave and that annual leave was declined to a certain extent and there was a negotiation happening. The employee came in and complained about calf pain, which was quite contradictory to their rowing and what they actually engaged in and it didn't align. Now, the reason why I say that this is quite an interesting one and it's very distinct is because if you look at it, a lot of times employers will say, oh, well, this particular employee they said that they were sick and then I saw them out with their friends. What's going on there? They should be at home resting. Again, like I said, the courts have been very clear. It is not on the employer to dictate how the employee has spent their time. And I'll tell you the reason why. There was an Air New Zealand case that came out. And in this particular case, like I mentioned before with the golf, the employee was dismissed because they spent three days of their sick leave playing golf. They said that they were sick with the flu, but then it later came out that the wife was actually the one that told the employee that they should go get out of the house and clear their mind and go and play golf and it would be something that would be more therapeutic. Now in this case the employee actually had a successful claim. They said that they were unjustifiably dismissed and this was upheld and the Employment Relations Authority found that Air New Zealand didn't do a full and fair investigation. If they did then the Employment Relations Authority went so far as to say that would have shown that he was actually stressed because of the recent death of his parents and because of that playing golf was something that could have been actually more therapeutic for him. And the sick leave wasn't about dictating how he should have spent his exact days. So what does this mean? Usually that it can be successful when the reasoning doesn't align with what the employee is trying to do. Like I said, the employee takes sick leave because their annual leave got declined. And then you find out that they've gone somewhere else. But I would say use this with caution. If you believe that there is misuse of sick leave, it's not just about the fact that they've gone out partying for the weekend. It's about making sure that you have got all your ducks in a row, that you've considered all of the evidence. Also, you need to make sure that when it is non-genuine sick leave, that you are considering other options as well. Keep in mind that termination has a really high threshold. That's serious misconduct. And what would a fair and reasonable employer do in the circumstances? 
a lot of times it would be a disciplinary process for general misconduct and it may be a written warning that the employee will get. But again, you need to make sure that you've ticked everything off and it's very clear that you have that evidence on your side. Now, the last thing that I wanted to cover and I wanted to really tie this off neatly is how to actually manage the workplace when you're constantly getting sick leave issues coming up, especially now as we're moving into winter, you've got people with genuine sickness and genuine sick leave and you might have people taking advantage of it and you're thinking, oh gosh, what do I do now? What can I do in this particular moment, Sanam? Have no fear, Law Lens is here <laughs> and I am going to give you my top tips of how to actually balance and manage these issues. Whether it's non-genuine or it's genuine sick leave, you've still got to navigate the employment and the workplace in that moment, right? So with the flu going around, all of these things happening, my top tips are to ask your employees to stay at home if they are actually unwell. So look at your rostering. You might need to change that around. Get people to actually stay at home if they are unwell. Don't make them push through and come into work. It will make it worse off, especially if they are genuinely sick. It's really also important to set your expectations and manage that with your customers, your clients, your suppliers, all of those people. Because at the end of the day, by ensuring that the employee stays home, by understanding if they're unwell, then you are able to set those expectations with the people around you. And like I said, it's all about making sure that you've rostered everyone correctly, that you moved everyone around and that you've shuffled things around. Unfortunately, it is that time of the year where people are going to get more and more sick. So you are just going to have to navigate this but don't worry these are the top tips that you really need to look out for and make sure that you've done everything that you can to cover yourself off look at having a policy in place speak to your staff if you're concerned about leave issues well that is it for me everyone i hope that this was very timely for you because i have seen a lot out there around questions of excessive sick leave taking advantage of sick leave misuse of sick leave and i wanted you to know if you have any curious questions around this or maybe you want to know a little bit more or maybe you want to spark a debate feel free to email the asklawlens at gmail.com email. And for all of you out there that stuck through this episode, thank you so much for listening to my croaky voice. I hope it wasn't that bad. And I absolutely appreciate everything about the community that we are creating here with Law Lens. So thank you so much, everyone. Feel free to reach out, connect with me. I'm happy to speak to all of you. And as we move into the flu season, good luck. Don't be like me. Don't get stuck with the flu. It's not that fabulous. I can tell you that much. I hope you have a lovely day, night, evening, morning, whatever it may be. Stay warm and I'll catch you in the next one, everyone. Hey.